We just cited the rally in your shares. Give us a sense. What percentage of your revenue is tied to government spending? And then how do you uh, grow your business outside of government spending? About 20% of the revenue will be affiliated with spurring our customers to make investments from an infrastructure point of view. And then outside of that, what we do is we, we partner with our customers to do two things. Simplify their business, which is drive operational efficiency that yields high margins, and then excite their subscribers, which is the launch of new services that allows them to differentiate in their markets and drive long-term revenue growth. All right, so you've actually been an AI player for over a year. You launched your own AI chatbot for your customers last year in October. Give us a sense, how are you using AI in your business now? We've been using AI for over five years, and the power of AI for us is actually leveraging the big partners who have built incredible AI engines. And what we do is we use that within our cloud to analyze over 50 terabytes of data that we bring in weekly to understand the experiences that our customers' customers are having so that they can improve it. So for example, if you're having a problem, the AI engine can identify it, and then the call center can do an outbound call to you and say, Frank, you're having a problem with your broadband service, there's something wrong with your Wi-Fi or an application that you're running, let us fix that. How is AI uh, impacting your, your future business as well? I mean, obviously a lot of your customers play either directly or tangentially in the AI space. Well, I think there's two ways. Calyx is a company, AI is core to actually how we run the company. In fact, we just launched Microsoft Copilot. We're really excited about it to allow our employees to be more successful. And then over the long term with our customers, again, looking at the 50 terabytes of data that we're constantly bringing in on a weekly basis, we will then build out new algorithms to help them be more efficient and to identify uh, incremental opportunities to drive great experiences with their customers. And a good example of you know, the impact of these would be uh, Tom Bigby, a small rural provider in Tupelo, Mississippi, who has an NPS of 91. And when you compare that to an Apple at 58, that gives a good indication of what's possible when you have engines like this guiding small companies to succeed okay. at a very high level. All right, so you're talking about one of your smaller customers. One of your bigger customers is Verizon. We want to make sure we yes. mention that. Also, I, I want to talk about you on social media, on LinkedIn, other places. You've been a very loud voice when it comes to the impact of higher rates. And you've basically just been saying the end of free money is changing the dynamics of a lot of businesses. Yes. I'd imagine it changes the dynamics of your businesses. As I said, Verizon's one of your customers, a big CapEx company. So how are these higher rates impacting your business? How is it impacting your growth going forward? For the customers who have leveraged our platform, again, software, cloud, and systems, um, it actually doesn't have an impact. And if anything, what it does is a Darwinian effect of they're more successful. Therefore, when the interest rates come up, you see these underperforming companies who have had free money for a very long time fall away. So our customers get stronger and stronger. And then for those who are not our customers, they start to realize that if they don't change their business model aggressively to drive very high cash flow, profitability, all these different component parts of a good, strong, fundamental business, they're going to fail. So it brings them to, to us. In fact, over the last couple of weeks, myself, I've talked to three CEOs.